Now we have Mark Michelson with uh, OVS OVN split update. All right, thank you very much. Um, so Ben actually talked a little bit about what I was going to talk about in this speech uh, yesterday. So I actually got to remove some slides, which is really good when your time limit is seven minutes. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just go through a brief timeline starting from this point last year. Because last year I gave a talk about how are we going to do this, and now I'm really pretty much just saying this is how we did it because we managed to actually get it done. So if we start in April, the OVN or GitHub uh, organization got created and there was an OVN repo in it and um, we did a, a brief proof of concept OVN split and it actually turned out to be I'm not going to call it easy but easier than we expected it to be um, the thing is what we did to mitigate some of the difficulties was we made OVS a git subtree in the project um, and uh, the other thing is we kind of completely ignored the actual history aspect so if you tried to look at uh, git logs you would not be very happy with what you saw. Then in July, um, that's when OVN, the OVN repo in the OVN org uh, GitHub organization became the official place to do new OVN development. Uh, and I got to give uh, tremendous credit to uh, Newman because he figured out, one, how to get the history correct in the OVN repo, and he also uh, put in the work to make it that, that we didn't need um, a Git subtree anymore either. Um, so then, um, oh, I actually got ahead of myself here. Uh, this is where Newman actually specified uh, that the OVS uh, build could be in a separate location than using the Git subtree. Um, we still didn't actually remove the Git subtree at this point, um, just because it was still a good fallback in case something went wrong. Um, and because you still had that OVS Git subtree, uh, one of the big problems at this point was if you were trying to run tests, say you added a new feature to OVN, if you ran make check, it would run both the OVS test as well as the OVN test, leading to just a, just kind of a pain to have to sit through it all. Then in September, this is where we actually started removing code. So the uh, OVS git subtree got removed from the OVN repo, and uh, also OVN code got removed from the OVS repo. Uh, and at this point, I would say the split was complete. Um, and at this point, I should mention that there are other, of course, commits and stuff that are related to split that happen between now and then. There was documentation changes, all sorts of other things. But these, I think, are the major points of it. So aside from the technical aspects, we also have to talk about some new OVN policies that we drafted in, in the past year as well. So one of the things to talk about is uh, OVS compatibility, because now with OVN being a separate project, you can't just assume that you, you're not just compiling OVS and OVN at the same time and know that you're going to have uh, compile time and runtime compatibility. So compile time compatibility, um, the biggest thing is you just sort of need to be running against a new version of OVS. And so we created this idea that we're going to store whatever uh, commit from OVS is required in the OVN repo so that it can be, so the correct commit can be pulled. Uh, we haven't actually implemented this yet, so if you tried looking for it right now, you might wonder what's what I'm talking about. Um, we also decided that at runtime, um, there was a lot of discussion about should we try to do something like maintain backwards compatibility with a certain number of versions of OVS, or what should we do instead? And uh, what we're actually trying to do is just make a best effort. Uh, we're trying to just go with best effort to maintain compatibility with as many OVS versions as we can uh, post 2.12. Um, and that way, um, we're not tempted to uh, break compatibility for uh, not great reasons. But some people also pointed out that if we just say we're compatible with every version of OVS, that puts us on the hook for um, potentially odd combinations we may not expect. So what we're going to do is try to test a subset of OVS versions to be compatible with, with each new OVN release, and that way we can document that we tested this specific version of OVS in some way, and that way people have at least a little bit more assurance other than us just saying it should work just fine. Um, we also are changing how OVN is going to be versioned. 
Um, so a lot of I, we realize that there could be a lot of confusion if we come out with our first version of OVN as 2.13 and then we start releasing, um, you know, similar numbered versions for OVS because people will assume that the OVN version corresponds with the OVS version, and that's not always going to be the case. So rather than using the major version, minor version scheme, we're going with a uh, sort of DPDK, DPDK-ish version or Ubuntu ver uh, version-ish uh, scheme of year.month. Um, so it, the idea for our first OVN release uh, is going to coincide with the OVS 2.13 release, which I believe will be about uh, February or March, that time period. So that would have mean that our first OVN release would be something like 2020.03, something like that. And the other thing is OVN we're planning to release more often than OVS. Um, the reason why is just because uh, OVN has what I would consider a lot of user-facing uh, features that people request and they don't want to wait six months for. So giving them a shorter turnaround time means that we can just put releases out more quickly. Um, and because the development time is also shorter, it should mean hopefully the same amount of effort towards putting in a release of OVN as it does currently for putting out a release of OVS. Okay, so I had a few slides about future plans for OVS, uh, but Ben actually answered, uh, put quite a few things uh, on his presentation yesterday that sort of repeated what I was. Oh, it absolutely was, 100%. Um, so I'll just uh, stick more with the technical side of things, because Ben covered things like mailing lists and OVN org website and stuff. Um, but one of the things that we require right now when you're building OVN is that you have to have uh, the OVS source built somewhere, and you have to point OVN to that built source. And what we would much rather be able to do is do something like um, you know, install from your OS the devel or dev version of the OVS package and just be able to build OVN from, from that. Um, and also, I mentioned before that when it comes to OVN, OVS compatibility, we want to be able to test the compatibility to ensure a better experience. So that's the other big thing. All right, thank you.